was the first day of unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus asking, where do you want us to make the preparations for the Passover? Jesus said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did as Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table, surrounded by his disciples. He said to them, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
He then took a cup and, after giving thanks, said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He then took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same with the cup, saying, This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Remember me. still at the table with his disciples, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. In despair, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who dips his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Woe to that one who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better if that one had not been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, Yes, it is you. Later that evening, Jesus told his followers, This very night you will all become deserters. But Peter declared, Even if all the others fall away, I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to Peter, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Oh, 
Jesus, I have promised to serve you till the end. Be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if you are by my side.
Jesus returned from the place of prayer to find the disciples sleeping. Get up, he said, for my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came here to do. Immediately they stepped forward and seized Jesus. He said to the crowd, Have you come here with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the courts of the temple teaching, and yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have said, took Jesus to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter replied, I am not. About an hour later, another asserted, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. 
But Peter said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then he remembered the words of Jesus. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Next morning, the council of the elders, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together as Jesus was brought before them. They said to him, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe. Then they asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied, You are correct in saying, I am. What further testimony do we need, they said. We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then they brought Jesus before Pilate. But Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they were insistent. Pilate, after learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, sent him to Herod. But finding nothing for which to convict him, Herod sent him back to Pilate. Finally, Pilate said to the accusers of Jesus, I have examined this man in your presence and have not found him guilty of any charges. Neither has Herod, for he has sent him back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. Then they all shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas! Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! 
The shouts of the crowd eventually prevailed. Pilate finally granted their demand. He released the one who had been imprisoned for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they had desired. When you prayed beneath the trees, it was for me, O Lord. When you cried upon your knees, how could it be, O Lord? When in blood and sweat and tears, you dismissed your final fears, when you faced the soldier's spears, you stood for me. When they arrived at the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals kept deriding Jesus. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? We have been condemned justly and are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness swept over the whole land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Oh 
is the body of Christ. How beautiful the heart that fled, that took all my sin and bore it instead. How beautiful the tender eyes that chose to forgive and never despise. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ, and as he Centurion, after witnessing what had happened, praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. When the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they were deeply saddened as they returned to their homes. All those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. Yeah. 
consider equality with God something to be exploited, emptied himself, taking the very nature of a servant, being born in human likeness. Being in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and disregarded its shame. When I serve Oh. 